Yeah, I just uh, got here. All right. Uh, let me share the, um, hold on. I see the chat, people are joining in right now. Uh, welcome everybody also. Manny, I sent you an email uh, with the uh, link to the Magma Studio. Check your email if you can. Okay. <clears throat> At uh, Manny Crossco at Yahoo. Oh, uh, let me double check. I think I might have sent it to your other email. Hold on. To the Gmail? Can you say, if you send it to Yahoo, it'd be better. Okay, I'm doing it now. Okay. And that's from, I, I, that, is that for me to have? Uh, for us to use here. Okay. So I have it opened up right now. So I'm in it. So okay. join me when you can. Peter, feel free to grab the, grab and share the screen whenever you get ready. I'll share the screen right now, actually. And let me know if you can see it okay. Yep. Got it. Let me right. load up large full screen. I click on that, right? Uh, on the link on the email? Yeah, you should be able yep. to. Okay. Let me just get rid of some of these layers real quickly. All right, everyone. Well, um, welcome and thanks for being here. Um, we're Expedition Art and um, Peter Hahn and Manny Crosco are going to talk today about uh, adventure sketching. So yeah. super stoked everybody could join us. Yeah, welcome everybody. Yeah, welcome. Thanks guys for joining. Yeah, I have a lot of exposure and contrast looks like. <laughs> uh, and let us know if we should be officially starting now or we're still waiting for anything else. We can start, we can uh, maybe just wait just like a one more minute. No problem. Give us a confirmation, maybe you can kind of open it up and we'll be ready to go. Okay. <clears throat> Oh no, are we already full? Are we at max capacity? I thought Zoom could do a lot more. Oh, you know what? We're 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 limited to a hundred exclusive folks right here. Okay. All right, well let's let's do You're it. Welcome everybody. <laughs> Great. Okay, we can start up. I'm good. Yeah. Um, Manny, if you want to give it a try, you're welcome to also import a photo just to give it a test on this one. For some reason, mine's not dropping in, but um, when you, if you want to try it right now, please do so. Let's see. See if it'll work for me. Yes, Hannah is saying 100 usually. Interesting. Yeah, when I use go-to meetings, my cap, I think it's like 250. But yeah, 100. Pretty good, I guess. You must have a premium account, Peter. We're a nonprofit. We're locked at a hundred <laughs> <laughs> for some thrift for th some thrifty spending, I guess. Whoa! Did it work? No. Uh, yeah, I got a huge, huge picture. All my pictures are huge. So, but now oh. it's all over my. Uh, now it is all over my. Uh, what do you call it? Yeah. Can you see me, Peter? Can you see my art, my squiggles? Yeah, it didn't work. No, because I'm just sharing my screen. Um, you'd have to try to import it into Magma Studio. Yeah, but can you can, can you see my uh, can you see my drawing? Well, it's all in white, so you're using white ink on your layer. No, no, no. It's not. No. That's weird. Here, I'll try to relaunch it. All right. Yeah, please do. It's never a fun demo if you don't have a few technical difficulties. Let's see. Let's see now. <laughs> there you go. You're good. Okay. All right. 
Yeah, and guys, if you um, if you have any questions or whatever, like feel free to type it in, and um, I'll read them out. Which side do you want, Manny? Left or right? Uh, I'll take the right side, Peter. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Hey, you, you want the right? Are you left handed? Not at me. I'm good. Just choose. Yeah, I'm, I'm good either way. I just want to welcome everybody. Um, we were going to talk, we're going to talk about a little bit about uh, the trips we take. Uh, Expedition Art has been, uh, what it, it kind of started uh, with me going to Yellowstone because I do it anyway, and then inviting Aaron, and then it turned into Africa. Christine and I have been to Africa a couple of times for some work. And now we take uh, Greg Beecham and Peter and a whole bunch of friends and we all get together and, and uh, head over and do trips to inspire each other and to, to uh, uh, it, it, I, as, a, as a kid, I always, I always watched uh, uh, magazines where uh, other artists would take uh, trips to Africa and it, it's always been sort of on my, on my, uh, in my mind to always do that with friends and people that have the same interests. So uh, we've been really lucky. Definitely. Yeah. Been uh, super lucky. Christy, do you want to maybe introduce Expedition Arts first too? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So Expedition Art is, um, we're a nonprofit. Uh, it is a collaboration of artists that um, help raise money for wildlife and nature conservation through art. And um, we're really of the mindset that art is a universal language and that we can really um, impact maybe the way people feel or um, approach endangered species or all different kinds of animals. And yeah. um, we started in 2015, this really small group. Um, and now we're, we just continue to grow. We do a couple of projects every year. Um, we're a nonprofit, but we raise money through art and workshops and trips and things like that. Um, and then we donate that money to causes that we're supporting. Um, so feel free to check out our website, it's expeditionart.org, and uh, you'll see some of the projects we've done there. Manny was talking uh, about Africa. We're um, trying to submit down what our big cap program is gonna be for um, this next year, pretty excited. We were actually supposed to be in Africa. Yeah, we're supposed to be there now. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a, a little sad, but at the same time, it's all right. We're getting a lot of drawing and sketching in in the meantime. Um, I hope everybody's staying safe and with COVID and um, we'll get back out there soon. Definitely. Yeah. Our yeah. Maasai guide uh, that we had out there does uh, send us stuff pretty regularly of what's going on. And of course, the, the, the time that we don't go is when the migration has been like the best he's seen in his life. Yeah. So, oh, really? Oh, yeah. He's like, I've never seen anything like this ever. Don't tell me that, man. Not right now. I know, man. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. W what if we were going and we were there, supposed to be there now in this October? And this, obviously this talk is about going into, you know, sketching on adventure. How do you prepare, Manny, for stuff like that? Like if we're going right now and we're heading out, flying out this coming weekend or next weekend, uh, what goes in your pack? Well, um, right off the bat, my camera. Yeah, uh, in my sketchbook. Those are the two main things. If I had to pick just one, it would probably be just my camera because I can always find stuff to draw on. Right. But uh, um, reference is so important, especially on a trip to like Africa. Right. So um, in my bag, uh, I, I do my walkabouts quite a bit. So my car is actually pretty loaded already just to, to grab what I need and go. Right. I have... Um, uh, uh, I actually have one of those, uh, I forget what they're called here, the, the, the bags that from Australia, the ones that... Um, oh, Etcher. The Etcher, was bag? Etcher. Yep. yep. Uh, I have one of those that's filled and, and ready to go in there. Um, I have uh, markers, uh, fine, uh, uh, felt tip pins, brush pins, as you know. Uh, you introduced me to a couple of the brush pins out in Africa. Right. Uh, I ended up using uh, Peter's art supplies when I was in Africa. <laughs> but um, markers, brush pens. Uh, I, I love um, uh, the sign pens, you know? Right. Um, and I talked about them in, in my talk earlier, those Pentel sign pens. I, I'm just in love with them. They feel like a little wet piece of rice, you know, that uh, uh, have a, a nice line and, and, and it's. Uh, ink proof, uh, waterproof. So um, some white pencils, uh, white out correction fluid, 
um, and a water, a little watercolor set, a little travel watercolor set. Exactly. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's my, and then I carry my uh, uh, stabilizer for my iPhone to film okay. and whatever I need. So, you know, that's, that's pretty much what you, it, it, it's simple. Uh, I, I do it a, a lot. So I know what to, what to bring with us when we go. But uh, of course you're limited to how much weight you can take. Right. So I think that was one of my main concerns, like going to our first trip in Africa last year in October. Uh, it was that kind of weight saving thing, which was one of my concerns because there was other stuff to consider in the fact that, oh, there's going to be a bunch of mosquitoes and insects. So I, need to bring my, I need to bring a repellent maybe. And I got to bring this and that. And all of a sudden, my art supplies start to kind of dwindle more and more. And I'm trying to balance, like, <laughs> do I got to bring more safety gear or do I got to bring more art gears? <laughs> I want to go, it's got to be more sacrificed. <laughs> And that was for me, you know, because that was my first trip. But you've gone in, in Christmas. Yeah, I've gone in the past. And, you know, it's always been a lesson. So last year was the second time that I've been there just in, uh, as, a, as a safari and to, and to actually enjoy Africa. Right, right. Every other year that I've gone before that has been for work. Right. So uh, uh, it, I, have, I have to pack very, very differently for this trip as opposed to you know, the ones before, because sure. before I had to take a lot of, uh, like you said, insect repellent and then uh, heavy boots and yeah, that yeah. kind of stuff. And, and then when I went again as a safari, just to enjoy Africa, I realized that I, I, I did a little bit overkill. Yeah. Uh, so I, you know, I, I, I could minimize uh, right. a little bit more as opposed to like when I went, when I was, you know, on the ground, actually working, working, doing the uh, field work. Yeah. So, I mean, when I was there, I definitely would say, out of the hundred percent of the stuff I brought, maybe like seventy percent of it was really used. A lot of the stuff I just like, left it in the bag, you know. It was like extra yeah. clothing or just stuff I didn't need. I didn't want to bring, so yeah, like, oh, you yeah, don't think of it, but oh, sure, sure, you know, and, and that's part of the that's and that's kind of the part of the of a cool experience too, right? To to you know realize what you know what you've done, and and if we went somewhere else here in the states, it would be different than oh, if for sure, you know, yeah. if we went somewhere else. So yeah. No. I, I really enjoyed um, being in Africa already, and, uh, and Christy's been in Africa as well, but I really enjoyed, because of where we were, we were in the Masai Mara, yeah. and I had been, and it was nice for me, it was really refreshing to me to watch you, you, you guys' reactions, you know? Oh, yeah, exactly. That was a lot, that was a lot of fun. Um, especially you, Peter. Uh, you had the, Peter actually smiles, guys. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, when we were in, in smile people, at all, <laughs> no, no, uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, but he, uh, just your, um, when you, when you guys pulled up, we were yeah. already there. Right. Uh, when you guys pulled up, um, you looked right at me with this huge smile, like, oh man, I can't believe this. Cause I don't know if you remember it. It was that huge. Oh, that's, uh, I remember. Yeah. The, uh, the, the big, huge pride that was there with all the kittens. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so. It was pretty crazy. There's, there was so much wildlife that, I mean, even everyone being a little on the jet lagged side, jumping straight in a truck from a little charter plane, everyone's mouth was just pretty much open. And <laughs> I remember one of the first things that we saw is we drove right through a bunch of elephants. It was just amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Even when you fly in, when you fly into Africa, the, uh, just seeing the, uh, all the elephants and Oh, there's elephants. Oh, there's you know, just in your arriving, just 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 in just arriving was was amazing. So. Yeah. So for me, in terms of getting there, my gear is also for art stuff. It's pretty similar to what you're saying. I try to keep it light for especially like these long extended travels. Um, for for my stuff, I tend to only really keep my pens, my gear uh, for just ink work. I, I bring maybe a pencil or two just in case. I was using some Prismacolor stuff on site, but I mostly did ink work. Now, uh, one sketchbook is all I brought. I knew that I didn't want to overload on paper. So I just brought like one solid sketchbook that I really wanted to have and one tiny one for note taking. Um, from there, I also had like you, the watercolor case. Uh, the one I use is from the, the Schmink, Schmink watercolor. Uh -huh. um, I had one uh, water brush for water coloring. So I don't bring any actual brushes, but just a water brush type that you fill with water inside. Uh, and then I also just brought my camera, like as you said. So I geared up on a bunch of camera stuff. Um, and that was it, really. I just had one pack that was over the sling shoulder. Uh, yeah. But just like you, I try to keep it super minimal, lightweight. I mean, a lot of it is because I've also learned due to constantly traveling locally, domestically in the U.S., doing local trips to museums or gardens or even like visiting you in, in Utah. Yeah, uh, yeah. So having understanding of like what I need to bring kind of keeps that, um, I guess, 
control or, or uh, consistency in material is pretty steady. Sure, so, sure. Um, it definitely, again, like I said, I think the way we both approach drawing observationally uh, kind of lines up a little bit. Well, it lines yeah. up a lot, actually. Yeah, uh, yeah. Definitely. So I think we kind of already know exactly what we need to have with us, where um, if you don't really do a lot of observational drawing and you do a lot of stuff based on like reference photographs of stuff online or yeah. books, you, you tend to kind of have all your stuff right next to you. So you don't really like kind of filter all the things you might need on hand. So um, I think that does make quite a big of a difference, which, you know, I don't know if a lot of students really get to experience that side of like just getting outside, not traveling to like Africa and stuff, but I'm just talking about going out your back door, you know? Yeah. Well, talk yeah. about some of the places that you guys go. Like, I, I know you guys travel a lot, um, but I know that you also have some kind of go-to spots when you're just trying to do some field sketching. Absolutely. Go ahead, Manny. Wow. <laughs> uh, I'm really lucky that, I, that I'm at where I'm at because of, uh, I'm in, in Utah, which I, I got uh, five hours to the south and I have Moab and then five hours north, I have uh, Yellowstone and even Utah itself here, uh, three hours away is just, the desert's just amazing where I've actually recently have started going over and, and uh, tracking the, uh, the Mustangs. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah and that, and, uh, that, that's that you know that's a whole different deal there it's actually kind of neat because you can actually sit in the car and draw you know, exactly if you, if you get it's nice to pick a, a hot spot a lot like the lions when they're just laying there right uh, it, it's nice to uh, but uh, I go to Yellowstone quite a bit uh, Jackson Hole just because of the amount of uh, wildlife that's there so uh, you, you know um, I'm, I'm, I'm really close to the, these mountains called the Uintas. So uh, it's nice to, to have that here. Um, I still go to the zoo. If uh, uh, some, Actually today, uh, I thought about it because I, got, I have a new camera and I wanted to go try it out and I was gonna head down to the zoo and give it a shot. And I actually go eat lunch there. and The zookeepers already know me. Yeah, I'm exactly. always in there. <laughs> so it, it, it's pretty. Funny. But in terms of that gear, I mean, we actually just had a phone call earlier uh, and we talked about that, like, we're both not only just mindful of what we bring, but we're also just really into the gear ourselves, like the brand, oh, yeah. Yeah. materials, yep. like, you know, you're telling me the other day you got your new camera. I'm like, I'm not that surprised. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. You know, it's, 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 it's part, it's part of the deal. And, and the, the great thing about it is like, <clears throat> it's not a matter of having the camera that you get. I mean, you know, with time and effort, you, you move on and get better, better exactly. supplies. Right. But uh, the iPhone is incredible, or any yes. any digital phone now. The, the capabilities of of them is just amazing. Well, I was uh, surprised when I was in Africa how much of my phone I used for video capture. Actually. Yeah, exactly. I thought I would be using my Sony because I have my Sony uh, the A7 III, but yeah. I was actually using my phone a lot of the time for just video work. Yeah, and you saw me with the stabilizer. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, yeah. it's amazing. It's amazing what those, 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 those cameras can do now. Definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Is there any questions out, Christy? Anybody or people still hanging in there? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, where in Africa did you guys go? Uh, you want to ask, you want to go, Peter, first? Well, yeah, so for me, it was the first time going, and I was joining uh, Manny, the expedition crew, a bunch of other people, lots of other great artists uh, to go to the Maasai Mara for the first time for me, uh, which again shocked me in terms of just landing and uh, meeting up Manny for the first time. As you said, I was smiling just due to the fact that my experience in traveling to like local parks and wildlife has always been like looking for animals. But when you land, they're just like right there. So <laughs> up and all of a sudden you look 10 feet away and, and they're just all over the place. And that's what really took my kind of breath away because you, as you mentioned, it is a very magical place. It really is. Yeah. It's, it's like I don't think anywhere else can match it in terms of that yeah. feeling. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've been lucky to uh, have gone uh, uh, to uh, Zimbabwe. I love Zimbabwe. We have a lot of dear friends in Zimbabwe. Christy accompanied me one of the times to Zimbabwe. We're, that's when we were doing rhino work. Um, it's a very, it's a very, very different feel. Uh, the trip before that, I was lucky enough to go close to the borders of uh, Mozambique, I believe, and uh, Botswana. I've never right. been into Botswana, but uh, but I got right at the confluence of the rivers there. And I have very dear friends that are in Botswana, filmmakers that keep inviting me. So maybe one day uh, we can all head over there. But uh, that's where we were in Africa, and Africa is right. just just an amazing, amazing place. Um, we're going to get depressed because we're not there right now. I know. 
but we will be before too long. <laughs> as soon as everybody gets healthy and lets us travel. I spent um, a bit of time in South Africa as well. It was really pretty down there. Johannesburg, right? Mm -hmm, outside of Johannesburg. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, do you guys have any tips to loosen up and to get in the mindset of drawing animals live, even if they're in the zoo and they can't move quite a bit? For sure. Mandy, you can take that one first if you want. Sure, yeah, I do. I do a lot of quick gesture drawings. You know, I talked earlier on my uh, Instagram live, somebody asked that, um, and I actually told them that, you know, it, it's even, I don't know about you, Peter, but even for me, when I start drawing right off the bat, like right off cold, I always get this nervous feeling like I'm at the beginning of a basketball game. Absolutely. And, uh, 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 and it's, it, it, it's normal, and, and um, uh, I do a lot of gesture drawings, quick gesture drawings. Uh, animals move, so sometimes the uh, uh, the drawings are all different as far as uh, right. it could be, uh, yeah, it could be a leopard sitting down and then he stood up, so now you gotta draw and stand him up. But it's just a matter of, uh, of uh, uh, loosening up and, and, and warming up. It, it takes, weirdly enough, it takes a little bit more time to loosen up at a place like a zoo. I don't know why, I don't know if it's just the tension. Uh, you have to get out of the mindset of always wanting to do perfect drawings. Yeah, you know, you, agree. You, you, you have to. You you you've got to get away from that. It, it's a matter of enjoying it. Enjoy what you're doing. Don't pre Don't put more pressure on yourself. Um, I gave the advice to some people. Um, of uh, I put headphones on, and even if my headphones aren't working, uh, I put them on just so people won't talk to me. Sure. <laughs> uh, if people really want to talk to me, then they'll they'll go by and and and, and tap me on the shoulder or something. Exactly. Uh, just because I, I, I want to be focused on what I'm doing. You know, I don't mind people looking over my shoulder. Yeah. But, uh, so, you know, warm up, uh, quick gesture drawings is the best thing to do. Uh, I do like a marker because right. uh, uh, for that, because I don't, um, nothing is committed. So it's just. How would you define gesture for you? Like, what would you say that word means to you? Uh, um, okay. I'll do, I'll do a quick gesture over here. So let's just say there's a, there's a jaguar. I just got to the uh, to the zoo. Right, exactly. So it's a combination of your movement and the line being put on the page too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that looks look more. That looks more like a monkey. But uh, <laughs> that, that's that's what I mean by gesture. Like right, don't right. don't uh, uh, don't sit there and, and noodle on the eye of that leopard for a while. Even you know if a, if a tiger's sitting in front of you. This this could be the tiger right here. Yeah, yeah. This this is this is this is a gesture for me. You exactly. Know, and these are these are just warm ups. Those are just quick warm ups that I do. I've seen uh, I I will and I've seen you as well, Peter. Like uh, like you're 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 drawing all the way over here to the left hand side. Yeah. Uh, you kind of start looking at shapes. There's yep. there's also that as well. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I would define it as. Uh, how about yourself, Peter? How do you? No, I warm I agree with that. I think you know I get a lot of students asking like even what gesture means but you hear it in so many different contexts to classes or techniques like figure drawing or observational drawing other kinds of studies so i think sometimes people get a little bit mixed up as to what that word really defines and i i, I side with what you're saying which is capturing uh an essence a movement of a line work itself and also your movement as it captures the simplicity of it as that word gesture means uh, a suggestion of that kind of pose yeah. so it's very loose as you said it doesn't really define clear details uh, you, you let go, as you were saying as well, too, that, that clear uh, perfectionism of uh, control, which is kind of an illusion, honestly, at the first place. But oh, yeah. getting out of that mindset is very tough, as you have said. But I would do a lot of the same kind of things if I am on location, where I do start off with drawings like this one on the very far left, where it is just minimal shape. But that shape is not a gesture, but it's more of a control of proportion. And then I might throw in a, a, a line for the spine of the tail that gives me a general sense of direction or pose. Uh, that could be the loose gesture enough for me. Um, so like even right now when you're drawing with me, like uh, would you say you'd want to do a gesture first or do you feel like you can bypass that because you already feel somewhat comfortable? Um, I've been drawing all day today. So I'm, I, I exactly. feel, I feel so you're already I feel warmed up. Good. Yeah, I, I'm already sort of warmed up. And, uh, right. but morning, you know, in the morning, uh, it's funny you talk about tails because animals with tails are great for gestures just because of the, because of the, uh, the, the rhythm of the tails, right? Right. right. Uh, I, I've always uh, leaned to those animals for, for gestures. So uh, just, just because I've already 
loosened up for the day. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm okay. Right. I'm the same way because I just walked in from a previous uh, live drawing with the Superani crew. So I've already been drawing for like an hour. <laughs> coming in here, it's like, I didn't necessarily do the very far left drawing because I felt like I needed to for myself. I did it for people that are watching. So they can yeah. also understand that people ask me, it's like, why don't you do any kind of construction or any kind of like study beforehand? It's like, I don't necessarily need to because I can already visualize that and I've already warmed up enough to go straight in there. Um, but if I wanted to show you how I would see it, then it would be something like this on the far left, essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Somebody asked me that earlier today in the talk and I talked about how I have kind of a shorthand already uh, right. to, to as far as like, I saw that you started immediately with your with your cat and immediately uh, um, you, 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 you put constructions like, like you're, they're more like uh, like ticks and, and guide things for you for visually. Exactly. For you. I call them, uh, basically, I just call them landmarks or suggestions of construction. <laughs> we had My whole, so are you laughing, Christy? <laughs> no, well, we had a question about that. So I wanted to ask that for you guys. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Do you have any, do you, um, do you go for any specific anatomy landmarks when you're drawing an animal while they're moving? Oof, yeah. Or do uh, you just go with the flow? Um, it depends for that day. Let's say if I'm watching the cheetah walk around, uh, I can't help but to look at the triceps and the, and, and the, the beauty of the, of the uh, elegance of the legs and stuff. And, and like I said, the tail. So, uh, Landmarks right off the bat, you know, look at a cheetah, you look at it over, of, of its over uh, lengthened legs and, and those stereotypical things that, that a cheetah is. So I'll go, I'll work off of that if that makes any sense. But um, I'm all about landmarks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am all about landmarks. I'm laughing because, Peter, uh, today I said that, I've said that word a million times, you know. Exactly. Just because, <laughs> that's, that's just the way I, I, I work. I, I look at landmarks and, and, and see how they tie into other things. I use them for proportion as well, Peter. Um, I mean, it's everything. It's a, it's yeah. a form of just being able to construct quickly. So yeah. Are you guys I, uh, are you guys drawing right now with reference, or um, is that, or is it all visual? I had one reference up, but now I'm turning this this cat around. I'm turning them around a bit here. Right. So so and, I and, was. Yeah, before we talked, I was going through a bunch of photographs that maybe things I want to share. But then after looking at a couple of images, I kind of selected, I kind of want to draw an that animal. But right at the very moment, I'm not looking at a photograph. Yeah. And, there, and, there's, nothing, and there's nothing wrong with looking at photographs. For there is not. Absolutely not. Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of kids or young artists think that, you know, that uh, it, it's a, something bad. But no, it's not. It's stupid. If you, if you have the reference, look at it. It's like we talked about when I go to... Um, when I go to Yellowstone, it's all about um, um, photograph and reference, uh, reference yeah. library, and uh, that's why I, we were I, going to Africa. Yeah, 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 and that's what that was, yeah. right? I mean, that's uh, really one of the primary reasons that we do the trips that we do, right? Yep. So you know, it's it, it's to get together as a group and go somewhere and you know talk about art and sketch and um, kind of relax. But we get so many reference photos. And what's kind of cool about going with, um, you know, even a couple people, even if you go to the zoo or uh, go out to, you know, a park or whatever, um, is just that you can combine your photos then and then you have so much reference you can draw from. Absolutely. Yeah. Not completely dependent on um, what you find, you know, on Google or whatever. Do you guys have any tips um, for going from sketch to line art? Go ahead, Peter. Well, um, in that situation, I wouldn't necessarily focus on that if you're drawing, let's say, on location as much. One of the key things I define as I go into that question and I answer it, but to set it up, I, I try to clearly define first what I'm doing as an intention or, or a situation. Like if I'm on location, I'm not going to sit there thinking I'm going to do a sketch and then a line art while I'm also looking at the actual thing. That's not in my mind. I'm there on location with Manny, with other people, because I'm trying to study. I want to understand what's seeing, uh, what I'm seeing in front of myself. I want to get familiar to it, try to capture something of information. With that information in mind in the sketchbook and also with the, all the referencing images I've gathered, I'll may, I may do another study as I go home, but when I'm comfortable and I'm able to now focus on the intention of trying to create an actual illustration or a piece that needs refined lines, I will then apply it. So 
that is then done through, again, layers of like really thumbnail studies. I might do a pre-sketch and then go directly in with the pen afterwards. But that's because I find pen and ink work very comfortable. There's nothing wrong with doing, let's say, like a pencil drawing and kind of doing inking on top of that, where most people do too. So um, I, I try, I, I want to make sure that my mindset is very clear as to what my intentions are of the job. So that way I don't get lost or do things I'm not supposed to be doing, especially on location. Yeah, uh, that's, that's, that's funny you say all that. It's so true. I'm the same way. I think, uh, uh, you know, somebody like Darren, uh, Darren Bader went with us, uh, an ama amazing artist. He took a lot of gouache with him. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, you know, everybody works a, a little different, but uh, I think Peter and I are very similar in the fact that we, uh, I'm, I'm the same way, Peter. I find a lot of comfort in pen and ink. Yeah. Um, um, and then it's nice to throw in some color, watercolor stuff over, sure. over the, you know, after, you know, after we get back. Uh, I always found it so much fun and relaxing uh, after our days of, um, of out in the safari, how we would all gather and yeah, exactly, and we and we'd draw more, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That Definitely. was so much fun, man. That's I, I miss that so much. I, I just got off the phone with Aaron. He was, he was saying the same thing that that camaraderie and that just that you know we all we're all passionate about the same thing, so right. we don't have to worry about. Um, offending anybody that we're not talking because we're, we're there to draw and, and to, you know, share the same passion. So. For sure. It was a definitely one of those things that everything kind of lined up, that we had the right people. We went the right time. Everyone was all kind of in the same mindset. Um, everything like from morning till night, and like we were on constantly, no one, ever felt like <laughs> they were, you know, kind of excluded or out or they couldn't, you know, engage with us. Um, everyone just kind of clicked immediately. So. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, it was so much fun. And, and for me, I, it was, I was a bit stressed out because uh, even though I wasn't hosting, I was sort of hosting, you know, right. Exactly. Um, everybody's are friends of mine. And these are people that I thought would get along and, and it was a bit stressful, but oh my God, it was just, just amazing. One of the, one of the best trips I've ever taken. For sure. And, uh, yeah. I so where would you guys, where, what's on your bucket list for the future? Well, um, yeah. I'm going to drag uh, you, you and uh, Peter probably <laughs> to Mongolia next. That's what um, I was going to say right now. It's like, he knows where I want to go. Manny knows. Yeah. Where. So I just, you know, I have a friend. Uh, voting uh, Tibet. Do what? I'm voting Tibet. Uh, <laughs> so um, I have friends. Uh, uh, I work a lot with, with big cats here. Uh, um, I have a friend that invited me to go see tigers in the wild in India. Uh, if you guys have Disney Plus, I'm going to plug in my friend Sandesh Kadur's film called Wildcats of India. It's on Disney Plus right now. Right now, but, look it out. Yeah, check it out, Peter. Um, it's, it's super nice. Uh, I've never been uh, to India before. I would love to see snow leopards and tigers in the wild. Oh, my gosh. That's you know, so, Yeah, that's, that's amazing. In fact, uh, a while ago, the guy that I go uh, looking for mountain lions with, just texted me and said, "Hey, I just found some tracks. It's gonna snow's gonna start soon. We're gonna be heading out, and that I, I just gets me excited." Yeah, for sure. But I think Mongolia probably. Uh, it's Mongolia. been on my list for the last yeah. three years now, man. Do what? Been on my list for the last three years, and you, oh. know, <laughs> you yeah. know about it. So. Yeah, I know, I know. Well, it was fun to take you. Uh, it wasn't Mongolia, but uh, to take you to the falconry meet um, was fun. That know? was this year in January. Yeah. No, yeah, that's for me. That's my next one. I wanted. I was planning on doing that this year. We're supposed to be in Africa now, and I was planning to go to uh, Mongolia at the end of the year, which you know we had talked about because you you know people out there that do the um, the falconry work and working with the eagles. Oh uh, yeah. And in Mongolia, I believe they have that big kind of eagle festival. But we we're talking about like even doing our own thing out there. So. Oh yeah, yeah. I was like, oh god, I wish. Yeah, I have a friend that's a, uh, a paleontologist up there, and he's. Uh, He's invited us as well, so yeah. it would be it would be just incredible to head out there. I'm I'm hankering to get out so bad because um, especially with long trips like this, I, I did a couple small stuff around here in LA. I mean, I'll just go to like local parks and museums and uh, gardens. Museums are not really open, but I'll go to like outdoor uh, gardens. So I'll just take photography and animal shots there, which I went about a uh, two weeks ago, because you know still in LA everything is kind of shut down, but um, a lot of the outdoor stuff they're still letting people in on limited limited um, kind of space. So I went there a couple of weeks and it was great just to kind of walk around a little bit. Didn't really sketch, but more just like taking photographs and just exposing myself to nature a little bit more. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. The more we talk about it, I'm 
It's like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, I've been doing this. Uh, I've been, I've been lucky that I've been, you know, going out um, the last couple of weeks. Yeah. No. I did that. Uh, I don't know if you saw it yet, Peter, but I put, I posted the new walkabout and it's all with uh, tracking some mountain lions. So it was, it was fun. You posted to do. that just the other day, didn't you? Uh, no, today it premiered today, today for Lightbox. I did a specific one for Lightbox today. Okay, cool. So check yeah, it out. It's it on. It should be on our uh, on our uh, Instagram, right, Christy? On our, our link. Yeah. To... It sure is. Manny, can you repeat the uh, the name of the documentary? Of Wild Cats of India. Wild Cats of India. That's yeah. what if, I thought. If, if you guys type in uh, um, um, I just India in, in the search in Disney, it'll give you a couple of them. And he's responsible for, for a bunch of those. Yep, I just posted the link. Okay, perfect. And he did some clouded leopard work, and Sam Dish is amazing. He's an incredible, incredible uh, uh, film, film documentary guy. By the way, Christy, I don't know, if, are you seeing this uh, the Q&A tab on Zoom? There's a bunch of questions on there as well, not just in the chat. Because I think oh. people might be directed in the Q&A uh, icon. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm so sorry, guys. I was, like, looking at the answered. Yeah. Not the open. Okay, I've got, like, a whole list of questions. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Peter. <laughs> okay, let's see. Um, Take your time. Can art students join uh, these expeditions? Yes. Um, so we usually have – it depends on where we're going, and it depends on um, – it just depends on what we're doing. Sometimes it's conservation work and we have to keep the um, group kind of small. Other times we do larger ones. Uh, we had, I think, four um, additional people that joined us in Africa this past year. And we did, um, we were running a Kickstarter at the time. And so we just opened it up on Kickstarter. Hey, you want to go with us? Sign up. And it was super fun. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, let's see, what kind of watercolor kit did you bring? Do you have any recommendations uh, for beginners? Um, I can answer that, and Peter. Uh, I like the, the Sakura uh, little set that I have. I've had it forever. I don't know if you guys, I, I don't know if you see the camera. So uh, this little set here is great because it's been through heck of back, but uh, there's a smaller one than this one, uh, but this is the one I've been taking for a while. And uh, I ended up doing my own um, uh, colors in there. But it's a little Sakura set. But uh, Cotman has a good one. The Windsor Newton. I'm not sure. Uh, this is, yeah, this is a Koi watercolor set. Uh, I don't know, Peter, what, what do, you, do you prefer anything? Uh, it's the one I'm drawing here right now. It's called the Schmink watercolor set. I think oh. it's a German brand, but. Um, it's a really nice one in terms of the watercolor itself. It's just soup, the, the pigment is really nice. Um, it's a little bit on the costlier side. I would normally use Windsor Newtons when I was younger, but uh, I was introduced to Schmink maybe earlier, maybe actually last year, uh, but I favored it quite a bit. Uh, and then I would just carry around um, a small little, um, what is that, water brush? So yep. small yep. little water brushes like this. Yeah. And water's on the inside of it. That's what I tend to use, yeah. Do you have a large pack for essentials in addition to your art pack? And how much does it usually cost for an art adventure to Africa or Yellowstone? You want to start with the first one? Um, what was it? Do, do we have what kind you of have pack? a large pack? I know exactly what your backpack looks like, Manny. It's pretty <laughs> long. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm kind of an extreme guy because I carry a bunch of, uh, I do a lot of uh, outdoor stuff. So survival gear. Yeah, I have a lot of survival gear just in case something happens. And um, I don't want to start telling stories because this isn't what this is about. But I've had some crazy experiences. And um, uh, mine, is, mine is pretty complex. I have an, an Osprey bag. But within that Osprey bag, I carry uh, uh, a couple of other uh, things that I, that I prefer uh, to carry all the time. Yeah, I mean, I just usually have a small, I mean, a small duffel bag I'll carry with me on hand for flights. Obviously, I have my just a regular luggage I throw my clothes into, uh, but I tend to try to minimize it to two bags for any sort of traveling. I'll have a backpack uh, that I can also carry on my flight, 
and that backpack tends to have most of my art materials. The duffel bag will have anything like extra paper or extra sketchbooks or extra bits of clothes or uh, things I want to make sure I don't lose so I can take with me on the flight in case they lose my other baggage. So um, that's pretty much it for me. I keep, again, I try to keep it as tight as possible. Yeah, and our, our trips range all different prices. So it, it really kind of depends on what your travel situation is. Like if we're in your area and you're coming to join, um, we've done workshops for a couple hundred dollars. Yeah. Um, Africa's really expensive. And I say that just because it's really far away, um, at least for us in the United States. And so you'll end up spending anywhere from 1200 to $2,000 just on the ticket to get over there. And it's a pretty long flight. Yeah. Um, so it kind of depends on how remote you're going um, and where we're staying. I'm sorry, that's like super, <laughs> super vague. So anywhere from like, you know, 500 to 5,000. Yeah, and um, for the students here, I think the easiest, the, the, you know, lo and well, United States, I know we're all over the world right now, but um, uh, Yellowstone's a, a, a more affordable thing because, yeah. We, yeah, we do, we do it, we do it a little bit different. Um, so uh, look, look when, uh, when things clear up and we can travel again, uh, look for the Yellowstone trip and we'll post things about it. And, and uh, we do cap it off, I think, right, Chrissy? I'm not sure. Yeah, we do just for transportation. Um, we've been talking a lot about doing um, some more camp and draw events. And yeah. that's really what we should be doing right now, guys. <laughs> yeah. You know, bring your mask or whatever, but um, is getting outdoors a little bit before it gets too cold. And yeah. um, it just depends. Some people don't like to like pitch a tent. Um, we've done everything from um, camping to glamping, you know, so we definitely, have had folks travel with us. Um, Africa was great. I mean, there was nothing really rustic about that trip. Right, was, right. I was, like inviting Peter to camping and not and saying that I have a tent for him and not and not packing. <laughs> oh man, that's my that? move. That's my yeah. move for Peter. That's what he does. He invites you, me. I just, away. I said, you don't need a tent. Don't bring one. I was like, okay. <laughs> I drive out there. It's like I forgot my tent <laughs> in the car. So funny. It was fine. Yeah. What um, are the moments you remember? I'm sorry, go ahead, Christy. Erica, I'm sorry, I keep interrupting you guys. Er, um, Erica asked, are all your trips self-funded? Yes, um, they usually are. So the when we're doing conservation um, work and we're traveling for that, and it's not just an art trip or we're not raising money through an art trip, um, we pay for everything ourselves. Um, Expedition Arts is a nonprofit, um, so it, we really just over 90% of the money we raise goes directly back into the causes that we support. Um, so it's all self-funded. Um, we have had different kinds of sponsorships before, but it usually has to do with um, helping us raise money um, so that we can um, so that we can support our cause. And then if we're doing conservation work on the other side, um, you know, it's a little less about art and it's a little bit more about vetting the partners that we want to work with and making sure that we can get money um, to the groups directly. Um, sometimes that's hard when you're working with international causes. So Manny and I have been on the road um, a few different places vetting um, people that we do business with and, um, you know, helping out however we can um, help the cause out. What are some good techniques and ways to simplify fur and feathers? I always get too detailed myself. It's yeah, a, um, yeah. Go ahead, Peter. Uh, yeah, either way. I mean, for me, it's um, everything comes down to decision making, uh, your interpretation through the use of a shape. So line is our expression to produce, you know, uh, a stroke, which combined together can create a shape. And the shape is what can represent the silhouette of something. So if the fur and the hair has a silhouette. Now, of course, when you're looking at something very, very furry, uh, soft, it seems like it's just a bunch of collections of lines and hatching to put it together, which can work. But if it's entirely covering the animal, all of a sudden, all you have is a big kind of line mass fur ball, you know. So uh, I always like to find ways to solidify that line and make it much more defined of a silhouette shape. So uh, that way, if I'm drawing, let's say, even like a, a spherical form, so I want to move the canvas too much, but if I have just a little spherical shape on the bottom corner left over here, 
I can throw in lines that represent the movement of hair collected and grouped together uh, that represents the movement of that fur. So then if I indicate where light sources are coming from, I can define the shadow side and the light side. And then I would use hatching to define things like form shadows, uh, movement of the hair itself. But I would try to find a very, you know, like I said, solid silhouette form so that from a distance, the sketch in the drawing still reads very clearly. So what I'm trying to do is maintain clarity of the sketch, essentially. Yeah. I, uh, um, sometimes I even use, uh, everything Peter said, I apply. Um, once you get to a point where you're uh, comfortable with those things, then you can start experimenting with other things as far as... Uh, Definitely. Yeah, as far as uh, fur, one thing to keep in consideration is um, the, the flow of the fur is very important as well. That will help you uh, construct your your uh, your line. Yeah, yeah. I always use that to guide me uh, as, as best I can. Yeah, I think if you look at Manny's sketches right now, it's like it's not like his hair is kind of going all over the place. It has this kind of like a radial effect, where from the center core it kind of radiates away from the center of the face out, and it has that natural kind of curve. And gravity is a part of this as well too. So the line yeah. uh, droops down in certain areas where weight is going to bring it down to, and and also even the hair itself can change in density. Some hairs are a little thicker, some hairs are much finer, and that can also change the flow and direction of the hair as well. But even something like this where I have speed where the animal's moving, uh, you can even stylize a little bit uh, that kind of stretches out or even like changes the shape and alters it slightly or uniform the direction of the hatching that communicates a stronger sense of that speed. Cat is packing up a hairball. <laughs> That's why Speaking I said, sorry. I'm <laughs> sitting at the door meowing at me. Um, sorry, guys, you're hearing that. Have we ever visited Indonesia? I have not. But we're uh, going to go. Yeah, one day. <laughs> one day. There's yeah, a, I haven't really been to Southeast uh, Asia at all, but I, that would be awesome. There's about a thousand places on my bucket list. If I, <laughs> if I just kept on traveling till I died, it probably wouldn't be enough. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Do you guys have any favorite animal or nature artists that you study or you recommend? Oh, Manny has a lot, I'm sure. Yeah, I do. Uh, at a very young age, I discovered a guy named Vadim Gorbachev, and he's a he's a Soviet a Russian um, illustrator, and uh, it's very hard to find a lot of his stuff, but I, I'm pretty sure if you guys type in Vadim Gorbachev, um, uh, you, you'll get some some uh, some Google images of his. He was he was huge for me. Um, and then Bob Kuhn, a guy named Bob Kuhn was uh, big for me. But he was he was more of a of a uh, he, no not more of it. He was a he's a painter, and you're familiar with Bob Kuhn, Christy. Uh, but Vadim was huge as far as like line work. And even to this day, and um, I have a little story where I he actually I actually met him, but I didn't know I was meeting him. And I don't know if I've told you about this, Peter, but no, we, so. he's a falconer, and uh, a guy came up and uh, wanted to look at my sketchbook. He couldn't speak any English, and I was at an international falconry festival, and I uh, he asked if I could if he could see my sketchbook, and I, I gave him my sketchbook and. Um, he looked at it and gave me the thumbs up, super nice guy. And then later on, uh, as um, time went by, the journal was printed of the event that I went to. And it said that Vadim, you know, visits America. And I was like, wait, what? And I looked at pictures and sure enough, it was him. And I <laughs> met him, but I didn't know it was him. That kills me to this day. Uh, later on, when I went to Abu Dhabi in Dubai, um, a friend of mine, uh, a falconer friend of mine, knew that I love Vadim's work, so he actually brought two uh, different books of the art of his stuff. It's all in Russian, but you know how that goes. I mean, his yeah. work. Is, yeah. So, <laughs> so the, and, and then, uh, and then Greg Beecham. Um, right. I, I discovered Greg in my teenage years. This amazing painter um, that I uh, just looked up to, and my brother and I always admired him and. Uh, we grew up ranching and cowboying, and we knew he was that sort of a guy, so we liked him even more. And then uh, when I moved out here, I ended up uh, going out to uh, an event where he was um, 
showing, uh, it was a, a festival and I knew he was going to be there. So I actually went out there and that was the reasoning for me to go is to meet Greg. And uh, I met Greg and actually I was very honored to have taken Greg Beecham to, uh, to Africa with us. And now he's a good friend. Yeah. Yeah. Last year. And uh, you're going to be jealous, Christy, but we, I took Peter to Greg's studio. <laughs> I am jealous. <laughs> yeah, and uh, it was it was just we had just an amazing time. He's uh, he's a very dear friend of ours now, and uh, that's another thing that art uh, uh, is very awesome at is uh, the 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 family and friends because I, I a lot of artists I consider almost family more than my actual family. Um, you know, Aaron, Peter, David, you, Christy. Uh, you know, it's it's amazing to get people that that love the same thing and get them together and, and, and share, share those awesome moments. So those are, those are my wildlife. Uh, Greg Beecham, Vadim Gorbatov, uh, Robert Bateman, amazing. I discovered him later. Um, so yeah, those are, as far as wildlife, th those, those are the guys that I'll look up to. Yeah, for me, I actually didn't really grow up with a lot of um, wildlife artists, actually. And, you know, only now in the last decade uh, where I've gotten so much more into drawing animals because of teaching, and because of the classes I teach from uh, Art Center that um, I started applying it a lot more. And as a youth, as a kid, I loved animals for sure, uh, whether visiting local gardens and zoos and whatever the case is, even just a general interest. I, I was actually much more of a dinosaur fan. <laughs> so uh, I was really much into paleontology and stuff like that. And then of course, when like Jurassic Park came out in the nineties and as a kid, like blew my mind. Uh, so dinosaurs were like the big, big pull for me. I was like studying like who different kind of paleontologists were out there and like what kind of jobs I could be. Even at that age, when I was just a young teen, um, I had a huge interest in it because I would just draw dinosaurs constantly. But uh, I definitely still had a very much interest in nature for sure. I did too. I took paleontology in college. Did you? Nice. <laughs> if you guys haven't seen Peter's book, I'll plug it really quick if I can get in front of the camera. This is a, oh, a, yeah. a beautiful book. I know he's done many, but um, he's just got some great, um, great wildlife um, tips, all kinds of just amazing stuff. I love that book, Peter. And there's a new one coming out uh, very shortly. We are planning to announce it hopefully this weekend into this coming From that original book that you have, where that first book is more of a general broad kind of big picture of the method of technique of how I draw through observation. But this new book goes much more into detail of different specific um, subjects. So. Guys, we're on the 10 minute countdown. You can okay. it. Sounds good. How do you go about capturing color or lighting in a landscape? Uh, in terms, well, for me, if it's about let's say we have a subject matter like these animals and we are including some of the terrain or the landscape, much like what Manny is doing on the lower right hand side and trying to figure out like what we want to do with that. Uh, of course, the time of day is really important and, and understanding the temperature of the color that's being, you know, obviously emitted by the sun. So if it's early in the morning or coming down to like golden hour, uh, you know, light changes quite a bit. Colors become much more saturated. Sun becomes overhead, high contrast, colors are kind of bleached out a little bit. Even in photography, we're being mindful of this, of color sets. Um, even like if there's a lot of clouds in the air or not. Uh, so it kind of, you know, dilutes and kills contrast or, or saturation too. But if we do have a nice kind of situation, then, you know, I'm typically I'm using watercolor and I tend to kind of lay down the temperature of the saturation that I want, which is if it's going to be like a really warm one, I'd probably lay down something like yellow ochres or uh, even like lemon yellows and something like this as an initial kind of pass. And then I'll layer paint on top of that because watercolor being transparent is really nice to kind of layer information to. But you know, when you're on location, we're using mostly those kind of fast mediums. I wouldn't be setting up like an oil painting or acrylic. Not to say that people won't, but if you're doing things where animals are there and they're going to be there for maybe half an hour sitting, doing watercolor instead of for me, if I'm doing color stuff is where I would turn to. Uh, me too. In fact, uh, when I showed my, uh, my set earlier, uh, I make my own, I, I put my own colors in, in the, um, in the little sets that I use just because I know sort of what my my uh, uh, subject is 
going to be. Yeah. So I'll yeah. I'll load up with those burnt umbers, greens, right? Almost like a, a heck. I even put together a um, uh, what do you call it? A um, marker set that I actually asked Carol Whitlatch. I said, uh, Hey, Carol, if you were to take markers to um, to Africa, what colors would you take? Right. And uh, and she actually. Uh, uh, gave me a list and I actually went and got all those colors because I thought, well, and, and they were, they were all very similar to, to what I would have picked. You know, um, I like having those contrasty, you know, it, it, it's all temperature for me more than, yeah. yeah. Than color. Uh, and, and that's, what's nice, uh, and, and, uh, challenging, right. Um, going to a place, having, a, having a limited palette. Um, you know, it's not like, like, like Greg Beecham where he's going to, uh, do a finished piece there, but the, the understudy is there and, and, and what you want to capture. So for me, it's just um, uh, temp all temperature, all temperature. Sure. You know, having the, the contrast of the, the skies and the, and the warms. A lot of uh, raw sienna, a lot of browns, a lot of earth tones. I have greens and, and, and yellows in there for certain uh, things. And then I love using uh, turquoise a lot. And uh, I, I get a, a bit crazy sometimes with my, with my colors, but uh, mostly uh, depend. I know what I know what my subjects are, so that all you know that dictates what what I'm gonna what Definitely. colors I'm gonna paint with. Yeah. I had a very specific question for you, Manny. Now I'm trying to find it. I'm also in case we don't um, get to all the questions today. I was um, just gonna copy them and. Um, Post them on FAQs over on our website. And, then, uh, and hopefully this won't be the, I mean, this is nice that we're doing this with, uh, uh, with Lightbox, but hopefully this won't be the last time. I think it would be cool if, uh, if we get together, you know, certain, you know, I know Peter's got a full schedule, but once in a while, do this again, because it, 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 it's actually a lot of fun. No, absolutely. I'd be down if we just, you know, go through like the Expedition Art website, announce, you know, yep. certain schedules of like in a month, we'll have, these people will do one like, you know, this week, another person that week, or, yeah, every week or something like that. Um, it's fun. Yeah. And okay. I know that uh, once in a while, just just because we're drawing all the time, Peter, you'll be like, well, I feel like drawing, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Hey, Manny, typically, um, when this person heads to the uh, zoo, your zoo um, in Utah, uh -huh. uh, is it the Hoggle Zoo? Hoggle the Hoggle Zoo? Zoo, the Hoggle Zoo, yeah. yeah. Sorry, the animals and lions and tigers are usually sleeping. Exactly. Um, is there a good way to catch them while they're active, or is that just good luck? Do you have a secret time? No, no, yeah, I do have a secret. <laughs> I'm not going to. I'm not going to tell anyone. <laughs> no, uh, I figured no. you have a secret. No, no, yeah, I do. <clears throat> so early morning is really good because they're active. You know, uh, as soon as the zoo opens, you, you can't. You can't. Sometimes you can't be at the zoo when you want to be because they close it or they open it. But like um, when they're, they're when they're about to be fed uh, is a great time because they start pacing. So toward the evening, um, the lions will get up and start pacing because they're they know the they know the, the they have a, the internal clock is already telling them that that it's almost time time to do it. So the earlier you get there, the better. I find that uh, in the um, winter. Uh oh! In the winter, uh, the snow leopards and the tigers are more active than you know than, than normal. So toward the evening uh, is the best until until they kick you out. I've gotten told to leave several times, not not in a bad way, but just, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, if that's somebody, it, it, that's probably a local person here, or is... yes, okay. probably. <laughs> No more bird show. That sucks. No more bird show. <laughs> no, they, they, COVID's messed up a lot of things. Yeah. I'm notorious, and I think Peter is as well, because I'm looking at it, for leaving out whiskers. Leaving out whiskers? <laughs> yeah, that's my, uh, that's my thing. I did a coyote drawing today with no, no whiskers. I always like to try to not draw the whiskers, but if I have a chance to like go in there with like a white, I might yeah. do that. I might okay. consider that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I am baited. I am baited. I couldn't help it. So, 
No, this has been fun. This has been amazing. Yeah, thank Any you. other last questions, uh, Christy, or are we almost on time? Oh, we are almost at time. Let's okay. see. Do you have any tips on just improving animal anatomy faster, just to get faster? Well, there's no, there's no, there's not an easy solution other than practice. Unfortunately, there's no secret to that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I wish there was um, because I'd be asking the same thing. But it's just a matter of practicing and practicing. Um, I've been into cats since the last two years. Well, I'm, I've been into cats all the time, but I've been drawing them a lot. So uh, the more you draw something, the more comfortable you feel. Horses, guns, cars, it, it all, it's all the same thing. There's, it's just practice, unfortunately. And, and yeah. keep a sketchbook and don't, don't throw away the bad, the things that you think are ugly. Keep everything so you can see your progress. And, and it's not about drawing pretty pictures all the time. Right. So, yeah. For me, I think the only thing that really helps a lot is looking for patterns. Uh, being able to bridge information of experience of things you've drawn from one subject to another. Because right now I'm drawing a cheetah, you know, Manny's drawn a bunch of lions, but the idea is that they're both big cats. Yeah, there might be very, you know, much differences in proportion and functionality of how these cats work in the environment. But the idea is it's a structure and the mindset of how to approach that drawing can be married over to the one thing to the other. So if I understand one base archetype really, really well and spend my time analyzing the proportions, the muscle structure, the bones, I can then have that experience and carry that sense of confidence to another animal that is something similar and yet have less time to actually break it down essentially. Yep. All right, we got last question here, just so we know that you're human like the rest of us guys. Um, are there any elements of animal drawing that you don't enjoy or that you struggle with? Like feet or odd sitting poses? <laughs> yeah, um, you know, I, I, I do, it, it, is, it is a struggle. Um, I'm going to be honest. Uh, drawing horses is is uh, is amazing because they're such a unique creature. Uh, but yes, everybody has to struggle. I've seen, you know, I, I felt good, and I, I I hear where the question is coming from. I've seen Tara Whitlatch struggle, and that made me feel really good. <laughs> uh, you know, um, because it made me think, oh yeah, she you know she has to work at this too. So yes, um, that's when you would. That's the now with struggle comes research and that's the fun part about things right. uh you, you you look at a at, at whatever animal you're doing you're looking at a horse you're looking at you're not drawing the hoof or the legs right that's when you go in and, and do some research and and some studying and that's the fun part for me personally yeah, yeah. on how to, on how to uh, to get better but that's really key is the fact that what you're saying is that you're trying to you find the way to make it fun that you actually enjoy it the struggle part of it where a lot of other people let to get to them and they give up so yeah. that I think is a, is a difference in which people can move forward and get past those plateaus because everyone's going to have the same kind of problems of like, oh, my proportions are off, or I can't get my line correct, or I can't make it clean enough, or I don't have these details. Everyone runs into the same issue. But the fact is that we're, we enjoy discovering it and looking for those answers and trying it over and over and over again, where it's a struggle, yes, because of the amount of energy and time, but we also enjoy that fact. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah I really love the research aspect to it. And I mean, maybe it's just my brain or slow learning or something but i always do a lot better if i can see something in person if i can walk around it and understand the shape sure. yeah. absolutely yeah i i sculpted a lioness uh and after i did that lioness now when you draw you have a lot you know better comfort with it so yeah. sometimes you can get carried away with your reference too because it's so much fun that that's all you want to do and you just don't want to draw anymore right <laughs> well cool all right well we're we're at time, guys. Um, wow, what a beautiful, what a beautiful cat drawing. Um, yeah, that was fun. That yeah, was it was so nice. Thank you for joining us, and thanks everybody for uh, jumping on and hanging out with us. And uh, we really appreciate it. Please look us up on expeditionart.org um, uh, to check out what we're doing for projects. And if you're in our area and we can camp and draw. Um, I know that there was some mention of uh, South America and Brazil. I'm going to take this as an invitation. And <laughs> you all I love Brazil. I love Brazil. Love Brazil. Fala Portuguese. But, uh, but anyway, thank you guys so much. We really appreciate it. If you're interested in, um, you know, in joining us on a project, please uh, join and become a member. It's a list that we use to... Um, anyone who's a member on our site will tend to email out when we're doing events and stuff like that first. So just so you know, um, 
thanks again. Really appreciate it. And thank you so much, uh, Manny and Peter, for uh, for drawing these beautiful things and um, and uh, answering so many questions. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for joining. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you guys. We'll see you soon. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.